Personally, I think equity skew is looking a little bit too cheap and has overshot to the downside. So I would expect some mean reversion soon. Uh, cool skew softening in uranium and uh, nat gas. And then other skew moves pretty benign and boring, to be honest. OK, um, now this is an interesting trade idea that I've come up with today. Um, and it's basically centered around the idea that S&P vol has been crushed and skews back to the lows. OK, and you can see that from the fact that all these green, all these green dots down here have, have moved from, you know, where they were over here around five or above five, they've compressed and gone down here. So this is about as low as S&P skew gets, okay? Two vols for the 25 dollar risk reversal in one month is, is unbelievably low. So what do we do with that? So obviously, I, I mean, you, you kind of feel like you want to buy S&P puts right now. Um, just because s and is at a local high. These are kind of levels that it peaked out previously. Um, and, you know, if this is an impulsive move of some kind, let's say that was a correction, okay? And this is an impulsive move that sets up the next leg higher, the material leg higher to new highs. Well, if that's a wave one, we should be expecting some kind of wave two correction, okay? And who knows where that correction is going to go to, but let's call it somewhere in that, 4.30 to 4.40 zone on SPY, okay? That is potentially the scenario if you look at it from an Elliott Wave perspective, which I, which I often like to do. Um, now, dealers are flooded in gamma. Therefore, that's why vol is so compressed. Uh, and therefore, just buying a load of cheap S&P puts because they look cheap and because our dashboard is saying buy puts here is, is you know, the odds are you're going to bleed that time decay and you're going to bleed that premium, even though it does look super attractive, right? Skew, skew down here is at the lows. Um, you can see that on this chart. Front end vol has got annihilated back to kind of a 10 handle. Just implied vols in general, very low. Carry negative and the market at the highs. Everything is telling you to buy puts. But the problem is, you know, that the street is long with this gamma. And we're going into a holiday period and seasonality for December is strong. So it's like, yeah, is it very likely that it's going to work? Not really. OK, but the market is giving us very, very cheap downside options. So what do we do? How, how do we buy these options and feel good about buying these options? So the idea is you need to find something to fund it. OK, uh, and, and the way I would go about finding something to fund it is looking at all the different assets that we trade to see where is the vol still quite expensive. Uh, and, and where I see the vol is still relatively high is in ARC, right, which is the, you know, the high, high growth tech sector. So you can see here, you know, before the rally, we were down here at 35 at the end of October. Vol was at like in the mid 40s. We rallied up to 44 and vol still at around 35, 36. OK, now that's still pretty low in terms of where ARC vol itself does get to. But compared to S&P vol at 10, it's three and a half times as much, okay? It's a much higher vol number. And it's not like I'm looking to trade this from a realized versus implied perspective. I'm just looking to know where is vol generally high in absolute terms? And is there something I can do to fund the purchase of S&P puts? So the idea is that ARK has got quite a lot of resistance. If you look at ARK, it's rallied 25% since the end of October. That's a massive move. You look at what type of monthly moves you typically get on ARC. Anything in the 10 to 15% is kind of about right. 25 is huge. Obviously, it's sold off into that, which is why it's bounced so strongly. But for ARC to then rally another 10% from here, I think it's going to struggle. And, and if we look at the spot price, if you look at the charts on ARC, 48 to 50 is quite a big resistance zone where there's been a lot of supply historically. So, and that's about 10% higher than here. So we think ARC's going to struggle to rally 10% from here between now and middle of December. We know the volatility is quite expensive at 36 in absolute terms. So what we can do is we can say, well, I want to buy S&P puts, but I want to sell upside in ARC to fund it. So you can think of it as kind of a risk reversal, but you're selling calls on one index and you're buying puts on another one. And you're buying puts on the super cheap one and you're selling calls on the expensive one. Now, I wouldn't advocate selling naked calls on ARC just because I have no idea what's going to go on in these gene therapy names. And if they decide to double in the next month, then ARC's going to go a lot higher. OK, so that is the tail risk that you're taking. So what I would rather do is I'd rather sell call spreads just to contain my risk 
know that those call spreads are still expensive relatively on the on the vol that they're trading on and then use that call spread premium to then buy me some s p puts or spy puts that i think in a correction can be quite explosive because no one's expecting it basically so there's a lot of repricing that can happen in spy puts if you were to get a sell-off so that's the idea right <laughs>